Hello and welcome to another video. I was recently teaching my friend Juicebox Hero a bit of Python and we went over all the different parameter and argument types in functions. Uh, I did, actually did a video on that, so I will link that in the description. And part of our bonus quiz on this was how do we use some of the syntax we know to implement positional only or keyword only arguments without having those syntaxes. And so I wanted to walk you through kind of the ideas here and the solution, and maybe you'll learn something about how things work. Uh, but before we do that, I wanna show off what positional only and keyword only arguments are just as a little bit of review. I go into more details in this in that other video. Uh, keyword only arguments, uh, which I actually really like and I think are very good, <laughs> use this special little syntax here. Uh, where you have a argument that is just a star with no other name attached to it. And then anything to the right of that is a named only argument. So for instance, if I call F1, you'll see that it says that we don't take any positional arguments, uh, but we must pass bar by name. So if we do F bar equals one, uh, this requires that it is a named only argument. Additionally, there, is, there are positional only arguments where there is a slash with no name, and anything to the left of that must be a positional only argument. Uh, so if we do, oops, I probably should have just printed print bar. So if we call f bar equals one, it'll tell us that uh, we got some positional only arguments passed as keyword arguments, so this is not allowed. Uh, I actually find this extremely useless. Uh, <laughs> I don't use this at all, but that's, that's a whole different rant. Um, but the question was, uh, how can we implement this behavior without using this special syntax? This particular syntax is new in Python 3.8, so you may want to simulate this. I don't know why you would, because again, I think this, this is a, a bad feature, but <laughs> I don't want to say bad feature, but I will never use this feature. Um, but you might want to do this in older versions of Python. Uh, uh, you know, additionally, this star syntax is new in Python 3.0? Was it in 3.3? I don't know. Some Python 3 version. I don't think about the version that it got introduced anymore because I don't support older Pythons. Uh, but you might want to use this feature in older versions of Python as well. And so I wanted to walk you through a, a little bit of quizzy answer to how this will work. Now, the, the hint to this is we can abuse other types of syntax in functions. Uh, there are two other sort of special argument types and functions, and we can use both of those to implement these two features. Uh, the first of those is star star quarks. Uh, this is a different way to require everything to be a name. You'll see that there are no non-named arguments here. So if we call F1, it'll say there's no, you know, we don't take positional arguments here. Uh, but if we say bar equals one, that will require us to pass bar by name. However, this also lets you pass sort of nonsense by name, so this isn't quite the right solution to this. Uh, we have to be a little bit more clever about this and unpack these named arguments ourselves. Uh, so the way that I used to do this back in the day when I had to support Python 2 is something like this, uh, where bar equals quarks.pop bar. Uh, this is how you do a required named only argument. If you had some default value, you could put that here. So this would essentially be a named only argument named bar that has a default of none. Now, of course, we need to forbid garbage arguments as well. So after this, we have to say if quarks and pop is going to mutate this dictionary. So it should be empty at the end. Uh, but if we have quarks, we could raise a type error, a type error unexpected named arguments, and then, I don't know, uh, we can just put those arguments into this. Uh, so now if we call this, if we do f with no parameters, oh, right, it defaulted. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, <laughs> I should have done a required named only. Let's do that again. Let's not do the comma none. And then this, and then our type error. Uh, so if we call this with no arguments, you'll see that we get kind of a not great error message, key error bar. This was our required argument bar. Uh, and if we pass bar equals one, you'll see that our function succeeds. It would print bar if I would have print print at the end. And if we put nonsense here, um, well, if we put bar equals one and then nonsense here, uh, you'll see that it tells us that we have an unexpected named argument. Okay, so that's how we can implement named only arguments. 
Uh, let's abuse something else to implement positional only arguments. Now there's another argument type in functions, which is star args. And what this does is it collects all positional arguments. So if you had just a star args, uh, this would require everything to be positional. So if we pass it as name, you'll see that it doesn't know this. Uh, however, if we only want one positional only argument, this doesn't quite do what we want because it will allow us to pass any number of positional arguments here. And these all get collected in args. I should have just done print args. Oh, that's a typo. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so if we do F1, cool, this works. We can do that. Uh, but if we pass a bunch of things, you know, we didn't want it to allow five arguments. We only wanted to allow one. But what we can do is inside of this function, we can unpack this into a particular width that we want. So if you do f star args, and then we say that we only want one argument, you could you know, explicitly put a tuple around it. <laughs> I shortcut a little bit just to uh, a little trailing comma there. Uh, this is saying, I only expect the shape of args to have a single thing in it, and I'm gonna assign that single thing to bar. Uh, and then if we print bar, this allows us to have a function which only takes one positional only argument. Again, we can't pass it as name. And if we were to pass more arguments as name, we'll get a, <laughs> again, not that great error message, but you know, we're, we're cheating a little bit here. Uh, but yeah, it would prevent more than one positional only argument. It would also prevent less than one positional only argument. Uh, so that's kind of the trick to how you can implement named only using star star quarks and positional only using star args. Hopefully you don't need this knowledge, but I thought it was uh, kind of a cool little exercise and was was meant to <laughs> drill in the idea of these collector arguments and some of the properties of being named only versus position only. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.